What's going on, guys? Welcome back to episode 74 of the Offshore Games Cast. I am number 74, Dave. Well, okay, hold on. Are we switching out different versions of us every single episode? I mean, whichever one is canon at that moment. Is it kind of like... What what movie was it that messed up all the timelines in the Marvel verse? No Way Home. Okay. So is this our No Way Home, but every episode? Yeah, you're Dylan number 74, and I'm Dave number 74. So instead of having like three Spider-Men, it's 74 of each of us. Yeah. <laughs> That's way too many. <laughs> and we all just go out and get a burger and a beer. That, I don't think any place that we would go to would like that at all. Yeah, it would just be 148 total of two people. That's, that's no i want to be i would hate me instantly and all of me would go dylan and you would all turn and go what and it would just be great <laughs> yeah it would be perfect speaking of perfect dave today we're talking about pokemon violet uh and yeah i am yeah you i know you've been going hard into that balls deep and we're going to talk about Directive 8020. That is the new Dark Pictures anthology game that Ooh. now that the, the devil in me is out and people are finishing it, they always do like the little teaser at the end. A little post for their next game one. info. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about that because they're putting a little bit of a different spin on it. But first, we have some guests to announce. Our season three finale and our game of the year special event is on December 6th. And just like last year, we were having guests do guest posts of their game of the year on AustralGamesGuys.com. Twitch streamer It's Gooey joins the guest list. Lately, she's been playing Call of Duty Warzone and God of War Ragnarok. She's a creator, gamer, and full-time goof. Sounds like a fun little ramble, little ramble romp, if you, if, if, if you, if you know what I'm putting down. I don't think I do know what you're putting down. But I do know that the crew over at the Pure Dead Gaming Podcast will be doing a guest post to complement their own Game of the Year episode, kind of like the Grumpy Gamers do. Uh, you can check out Jess, Craig, and Andy as they talk about their new as they talk about new releases and recent gaming news every week. Also, Alejandro from a Random Gamers Corner. Every episode, he talks about a new game or gaming topic, recently covering the Bayonetta three controversy and their top one hundred Fire Emblem moments. That's a lot. I don't know if I could pick 100 top anything in anything. 100 top punch animations in Yakuza Kiwami 2. Uh, they probably don't have 100 different punch animations. That's a lot. Uh, I can't help you anymore. We're also welcoming Fire Rider from the Pixel, Pe the Pixel People podcast. Uh, on each episode, she is joined by a guest to do a deep dive on a specific video game character that resonates with them, which I think is an awesome idea for a show. And we have talked a little bit about me being on it at some point in the future, hopefully sooner Ooh. rather than later. Someone else who's joining us is Jeff and Brody from Diggity, a video game podcast joins the guest list. This is this is a long list and everyone's so naughty. Jeff and Brody tell it like it is and are self-proclaimed as two of the most blunt individuals on this earth. And I know for a fact Jeff gets naughty. That is so unnecessarily raunchy. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Offshore Games cast. Normal time, which is after hours. It is always after hours. Last but not least, we are welcoming your friendly neighborhood gamers, Andrew and Dylan, their goal is to shine a light on the awesome people in the gaming community while doing deep dives on their favorite games. Personally, I prefer Dylan over Andrew, but I'm maybe a little biased. I'm also a little biased, so I'm picking Andrew. We have to break out the sumo mat. <laughs> All right. I'll use my fist this time. Dave, we've been playing some games. I've been playing some game. Before you talk about Pokemon... I got to talk about something. Tell me, because I see a lot going on here. Do you know the game The Last Aura Crew? I've heard of it. So it was recently my girlfriend's birthday, and she wanted to play something co-op. So we see this game, 
you know, it's a fantasy world and it's all about you can play the whole story co-op and it's supposed to be one where the choices matter. That's really what they were pushing, right? Mm-hmm. It sounds right up our alley. Uh, it does, to be fair, it does seem like, depending on what faction you choose, it does seem to drastically change what your game is going to be like, including okay. like the locations you go to and what's going on there. Uh, so you can either side with the queen you can side with these rat people. They're literally just walking, talking giant rats. Uh, or there's this third faction, which name I can't remember, but they're the ones that like find you. Uh, you you play as this guy named Silver. The uh, you can't. N- no, that would maybe be better. Uh, Sonic 06, the game, the character. I would play Sonic 06 in the last Aura crew. Easter eggs. Uh, so Silver wakes up on what seems like an ancient planet or not ancient alien. Maybe it's ancient. (laughs) It could be. Uh, so drunk. Yeah. He wakes up on an alien planet and right off the bat for a game. That's all about like choices and stuff. This is just like a pre-made character that you can't customize whatsoever. Just actually, sorry. You can do one thing, change his haircut between two different hairstyles, which is like, like the I don't know what the name of the haircut is, but like one side shaved and the rest is like long into the side. Yeah. Or you could just do completely shaved. Those are the that... two options. Go with the former on that one. That's what we did. Um, your silver sucks. <laughs> he just sucks. So he's waking up with no memory on this alien planet with no idea how he got there. Mm-hmm. And all he wants to do is is put out little quips that he's Spider Man. Yeah, but usually not funny. Eat my underwear. He tries uh, to be like you little you little <laughs> uh uh ground boy. Yeah, ground boy. Uh, yeah. He tries to be like just really funny, and at first I thought it was hilarious because of how ridiculous and stupid it was. Mm-hmm. Just because it'd it be like this really serious alien, like "Oh, you've woken up," oh, all this stuff, and this is like a pretty serious moment. You got to figure, yeah. like, if you're wait, you're not gonna just be calm. But it was just kind of like, "What? Well, okay," and like just making these little quips that completely took away any sort of like gravity to the situation. So, okay. right off the bat, can't take any of this <laughs> story seriously at all. Uh, combat is. I, it's supposed to kind of be like Dark Souls, but easier in the sense that you're going through a level that loops back around itself a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're opening like little shortcuts and there are bonfire equivalents, which are just it, it's a spot where you could just level up. Okay. Um, co-op, I was not. I didn't like the way it was handled. So second player is just a hologram of silver. So you have two silvers, except the hologram automatically gets a shaved head. Uh, <laughs> no choice. And it they have the uh, so you share the same loot pool, but can equip different things, which can be kind of annoying because usually one person will just always have worse equipment then. Yeah. Uh, when the main player levels up like or puts a skill point into one of their skills, that's the only time the second player gets a skill available to use or a skill point to use. So she was player one. I was player two. I was the hologram. I couldn't put in any of my skill points until she would put a skill point in. Then I have one available to use. That's stupid. Also something, if I'm playing what's supposed to be an immersive RPG and I want to get like into it, one of the biggest things is how your character looks. Mm -hmm. And as a hologram, they kind of do like the, you're just always like light blue and kind of see through. Yeah. So your gear, you don't really ever get a good look at it. And it all just kind of blends together no matter what you're equipping. Uh, The game just wasn't that good. No, it was disappointing. Like I, I didn't exactly have the highest of hopes because I did see a lot of the reviews were around six out of ten. Oh, but like the concept is cool the the final product is not so cool 
I do remember hearing about it and feeling kind of excited. Um, definitely not going to play co-op now because that re- that's giving me like flashbacks to Katari Fable- Fables where I would just sit there and just <laughs> like hope like time to go to bed, time to stand over the bed and watch. So yeah, like, <sighs> you you do get to take part in combat pretty evenly, but also. Mm-hmm. Not surprisingly, in like a narrative driven game, the main player is the only one that gets to make any sort of dialogue choices or anything like that. Okay. But they also do the thing where if I wanted to even just talk to someone or interact with many of the things, it's like, nope, you got to wait for the main player to come do this. And I'm like, I, yeah, I don't like that stuff. Yeah. So I'm here to just fight. That's it. (laughs) All right, Dave, tell me about Pokemon now. I'm ready. Oh, God, where do I start? <sighs> Remember when I thought Arceus was going to be my game of the year? Uh-oh. Mm. It turns out that you do not need that catching mechanic to have an amazing Pokemon game. Granted, this Pokemon game runs like dog shit that was eaten by a pig and then shit out. So, <laughs> that was kind of like Arceus, people really shat on it for like the, the the visuals or like the the pop in or like it looked like an old game but it didn't really have performance issues it runs so much better than violet or scarlet does at the moment and i've so as of right now i put about thir- i've just under 36 hours in since release i have wow that's a lot stop playing that's I, a lot i'm addicted and even though it runs terribly and the optimization is like the last thing they focused on, I can't stop. It is so, it's so perfect still. Like it's still, even without that specific catching mechanic, I can't get enough of battles, exploring that open world. It is amazing. I have a lot of questions. Please, let's just start. I love answering questions. How is the open world compared to Arceus? Because Arceus's biggest issue was, yes, there were Pokemon everywhere, and I loved going around catching them all, but it was otherwise pretty empty and bland. There are a lot of spawns everywhere, no matter where you go, and there's a lot more different Pokemon mingling with each other to make it more immersive and uh, really get that world building. But occasionally, for gameplay purposes, you'll see like a group of Shinx, like five of them, or maybe you'll find a Luxio with four Shinx surrounding it, kind of like protecting it and just have them react in certain ways. Like if you were to take out the bigger one, the, the smaller ones will start getting upset and be scared, maybe run away. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. So, there's so much brought in from Arceus like that. Uh, What are the cities like or maybe city? I don't really know, but I know that that was a big thing they were showing. There's the massive main city, which is Mesa Goza, and that's where you go to school and you have like your big school building. You can take classes there. I only just started taking classes recently. They're very simple, just kind of going over some text boxes and answering a question. But after the first, I did three classes of biology and then I took a midterm, which was like 10 questions. You know, you see, I'm into this. I love that shit. So I think there's like six different classes you can take at the moment, too. And they each have a midterm and a final, it seems. I like that. They're Uh, fun, all with different uh, uh, instructors as well. Are there side quests? Not like in Arceus. Just kind of a lot of exploring. Like your traditional Pokemon game. You'll go up to people. You can maybe trade with somebody or they're looking for... Like, you can get this item from them if you give them a certain amount of resources or something. It's not that in-depth. It's mainly focusing on the three storylines that are presented. Can you... I feel like this is just, like, (laughs) rapid-fire interview. (laughs) Oh, this is a perfect time to, because I got all the info. Um, okay, so I know it's, it's, like, it goes back to that traditional turn-based style, Mm -hmm. but... Are there moments where, like, you're running around and the Pokemon run up to you and force you into a battle? Oh, absolutely. They still have all of their little uh, AI emotions where, like, maybe they'll stand there or they'll get scared and run away or they'll be furious and want to come out and attack you and run after you. They'll also just pop up out of the goddamn nowhere as you run it over and you start a battle and you don't want to. 
Right. That's really what I was getting at. Like, is it the more annoying version of Arceus where it's, hey, I want to run away from this, but now I have to go through the battle start animation. I have to try to flee and then hope it works and then it's come out of that animation. It's faster compared okay. to Arceus, but there's a lot of times where you will find a very small Pokemon and they will just pop up, spawn out of nowhere right in front and you will not see it. It will happen a lot. Okay. What are the bugs like? Has anything broken your game? I've crashed twice. Ooh, um, that's that that's rare for a Nintendo game. Certain times where I'll jump while on Miraidon, I'll either jump into something and collide with it and land in like a falling animation, but I can but like I can't really move unless I jump out of it. Like it's not like game breaking. There's only one time where that's happened and I ended up falling through the map and then reloaded. <laughs> Uh, just a lot of pop in and just going around in circles waiting for certain Pokemon to spawn because it's just really taken a lot to get it all there. The uh, frame rate and the uh, just it running in general has been the worst to the point where you're seeing one of the classroom cutscenes and those kids are moving at like two frames a second. Oh. It is <laughs> horrible. That seems like it would be the worst part because like, at some point visual glitches can just be kind of humorous as long as they're not interfering with too much. But frame yeah. rate dropping that badly can really fuck things up. It's still addicting as shit and I can't stop no matter how bad it runs. I just, I just want to jump back in. It's the only thing I've played since it released and I'm so, 36 hours in combat is it is just like back to traditional, right? Just turn based. You can go up and surprise a Pokemon like with their back turn by throwing the Pokeball, but that's like initiating the battle. But you'll get you'll pretty much have the opportunity to go first every time. OK, but if you do like sneak up on a Pokemon and throw a Pokeball at their back, there's no not chance gonna of being like a stealth catch. No, you have okay. to go through the battle. Have you played any co-op? Pretty much the entire game. Okay, so that, I think, answers the next question. But what you're saying is you can meet up with someone and basically play through the entire story with someone else. Technically, you can have up to four people. You'll all run up to the gym together, but you'll be doing it all separately for your own story moments. And then you meet back out on the outside, and then you can just like, all right, where do we want to go next? Do you want to go here and explore and catch? Do you want to go to this next thing and we'll all do it together? Do you want to go do a raid? What do you want to do? Okay, but it... For each separate player, because you're playing Violet, I assume Emily's playing Scarlet. Right. So one of you has to join the other person's game, I'd imagine. Yeah. So let's say Emily joins your game. Mm -hmm. You're in the world together. And then she's like, oh, you got to go to work. So I want to play by myself. It oh, seems everything just just goes with that player. If they join my world and they go and do two gyms and I'm going to do two Titans, they go back to their game. Those two gyms are done. That seems weirdly good for a Nintendo online system. It has been the most fun thing is just hopping in with her and just like, what do you want to go do now? And I'm like, oh, look, I caught this. She goes, oh, I really want that. I'm like, oh, let's trade. OK, because, yeah, my biggest worry was the co-op, especially with it being a Nintendo game, because, like, look at all the bullshit with Animal Crossing. No, absolutely. Like, this like, is the it, opposite. It is. It works pretty much perfectly. That is very surprising to me, but that's a good surprise. Mm -hmm. um, have you had any issues with, like, staying connected or one of you, like, getting kicked out a bunch or? Not really. We go for a few hours at a time. I mean, we're just going off the Wi-Fi, so it's not the best situation. But pretty much every time it happens, we load right back into each other with the little link code and just continue for hours and just go and play like nonstop. It's only crashed for her once and only twice for me in 36 hours. Impromptu content question for you. I have a capture card. Would you want to do a video series on this? Pokemon or yes yeah sure you heard it here first folks I, I yeah I'm down to play more and more Pokemon 
Especially I don't know when I'm going to play this out. game, but I want to. <laughs> it's amazing. There must have been like 40 some odd people midnight release when I went to go pick it up. That Okay, I was going to say that's a lot, but I guess it's not surprising because Pokemon is insanely popular. It really is, and it was awesome. This game sounds like it makes a lot of smart changes other than ripping out the good parts of Arceus. Yeah. It it has so many things that made Arceus amazing, but this is your traditional Pokemon game with the gym battles. You have the Elite Four at the end, but you can also take on the Titans that were introduced in Arceus. Not necessarily the same way, but more of just a standard battle back and forth. And then you have the Team Star bases, which really takes advantage of the let's go feature where you can just throw your Pokemon out next to you, which when you're doing one of these, you can have up to three at a time with you. Otherwise, when you're just walking around solo, you can only have your main party uh, person walking with you, Mm. but they just go out and attack the Pokemon right then and there and move on. And then you fight the big boss at the end. And that's their version of like the bad guy storyline. We'll still. Okay. I was going to say team star is like team rocket. Yeah. Okay. I don't think I have any other questions. I've I've gotten really lucky with some things. I as of right now, I think I have 314 out of 400 Pokemon. That is also insane that you've I, done this in less than a week. Oh, it's been or 3 days. A little over. Oh my god, it's been 3 days. The I got it at midnight on the 17th, so the 18th, 19th, 20th. Today's the 21st. So officially today's the end of day 4 technically. And you played for 36 hours? <laughs> yep. I was thinking that's a lot over the span of a full week. Nope. It's been four days, pretty much. That's a lot. <laughs> I've done, uh, caught 314. I've got one of the shrines done, which there are these, like, sticks, like, stabs in the ground all over the map in different sections, and you pick up all of them. And it unlocks this shrine, which brings out one of the legendary quartet of the the game. What does that mean? So like four of the other legendaries, there's more legendaries, but these are like the quartet, kind of like the Zapdos, Articuno, Moltres of the game. Are they all vehicles? Nope. Uh, we have basically a saber tooth tiger, a snail, a koi fish and some weird rock bull moose can you ride them no ah you have to ride the weird motorcycle pokemon yeah but fucking miradon's dope i love him so i can't take it seriously every time you say miradon (laughs) do you like coridon better that's that's the scarlet scarlet one coride coride what's what's the play on words there i don't know it's still ride on it is still ride i don't I don't like I don't like that at all. I find that Whatever. extremely silly. I like them. They they really bring them into the story and like pop out of their own Pokeball and just do shit with you. I don't like it. I've also done a few surprise trades and my first night of doing surprise trades online, I got a Sprigatito. I ended up picking Fue Coco. He's all the way leveled up, but I ended up getting a Sprigatito. So I was like, all right, fuck yeah. And I used a lot of my uh, candies and leveled that up to max uh, or to the final evolution so I could use it for the Pokedex. What and then, what is a surprise trade? Is this just like you're gambling your Pokemon trading online with another person? Oh, but like just random Pokemon, random people. Yeah, you don't know what you're going to get. So you could just put up a random Pokemon and you're just going to get a random one in return. Yep, you could put up like a Pidgey hypothetically, and get a starter Pokemon in return. That That's interesting. Is that a new thing? No. Oh, okay. Well, shows what but I But it's know. there. Um, but I got a Sprigatito the first night, and then yesterday I ended up getting three Fue Cocos, and I ended up getting two Quaxleys. So I ended up sending one of those to Emily, and I leveled up Quaxley all the way to Quackaball. <laughs> and yeah the, the, so <laughs> sounds like a whole other language it really does <laughs> but i have all three starters leveled up all the way now and i'm mainly using my uh lux ray and my um skele- dirge. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
Yeah, you know, I was hanging out with my skill dirge the other day when I was Lux raying it up. Hey, man, we would just hang out sometimes. We go to the picnic. <laughs> I we th- I throw the ball out they could play with. I I give them a bath. Is that an actual other mini game you can do? Yeah, you can go to the picnic and open that up and you can bring all your Pokemon out and you can like put a ball down for them to play with and knock back and forth with each other. You can go up and like in- interact with them and give them a bath and clean them off. They even get experience too. I like that. I like I like mini games. I think the most exciting thing you've told me about is how well co-op works and going to school. Yeah, I mean, each of the gyms have their own gym challenge. It's not just battling people. You have to go do something. I like that. So like for one of the gyms, I think it's the grass one. You have to go and search the area, the town for 10 different sun flora, and they just start following you. And you kind of just got to herd them back into their fence and then you get to go battle the gym leader i Uh, yeah i like that yeah so there's a bunch of stuff like that there's the titans as well which are the five big massive titans and you're looking for these um herba mystica that you can use to make the sandwiches and help like improve like upgrades in a way to go search for certain pokemon or get higher chances at stuff shinies is a big hunting thing with that and there's like a little storyline going that through that with one of the students as well, which is very cute and sweet. All right. This game sounds good. So as of right now, I have done four of the five Titans. I think three of the five Team Star bases, and I just finished all the gym badges. I just have to take out the Elite Four. Uh, and you only have... What'd you say? You have 314? Yeah, so I have about 80 some odd left to go. It's not a lot. Nope. You're almost done. It's, it's been so much fun, though. That that sounds good. That's, I want to play it. Oh, and I'm so down bad on the customization. I got my dude. I'm the sickest fucking 10 year old walking around this goddamn <laughs> region. <laughs> Dude, I am. I look dope as shit. You got to remind me to take a picture and send it to you. I got a fucking motorcycle helmet on that's okay. black with blue. And I'm, right. I'm completely matching my Luxray. I have my winter outfit on, which is like a full long sleeve suit and pants. I got black boots and I got yellow gloves. And I'm just like walking around this sick ass 10 year old in a helmet. <laughs> I, I could dig that, I think. And I throw my Luxray out. We're just walking together. I'm like, this is fucking badass. <laughs> And just doing your slow walk. Yeah. And the, the walking has, is the let's go feature is used to level up Pokemon to like uh, Palmo into Palmot and Relor into uh, Rabska. You have to walk around in let's go mode for a thousand steps in order to level them up. Wow. Ooh. So I just went in circles. Yeah, that that sounds like the best way to do it. it takes about 13 steps to go in a full circle. and You just do that a few times. And it, gets up there and you just level them up and then they're good to go. They're evolving. That doesn't sound too bad. No, it goes by pretty quick. Yeah. All right. So what you're saying is game of the year is going to be Elden Ring versus Pokemon Violet. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's where we're going to be fighting. It's um, it's incredible, dude. I and I can't wait to get at the end game stuff, whatever that is, and everything else. Collect everything, shiny hunt. I'm looking for a shiny shanks. Try my best. Ooh, you're getting that deep into it. Oh yeah, if I have the ability and they they did make it easier, I'm gonna hunt for a shiny fucking shanks. Are you gonna go for the full shiny decks? No, not at all. <laughs> but I, will I know people get really into that. Absolutely, they're gonna be playing this game for years. All right. Well, does that conclude Pokemon? I think so. The fact that I want to bring my Switch down here and like play it when you're talking is like just how good it is. No matter how bad it plays, I cannot stop. I love it. Two Pokemon wonder, games in one year that are this amazing. I wonder what type of like post-release support they're going to have with it. Because it's just the fact so that it's have- Nintendo. You they know? have a middle crater that is blocked out on the map, and they have the top right side that is like blacked out, and people think that that's going to be the DLC area. Okay. I and hope I'm they make it prom better. 100% I'm making it. I hope so too, but I'm playing that DLC no matter what. I mean, yeah, it's not going to stop me 
from playing the game, but yeah, I think from this point it. on, from Arceus on, I think I'm down bad for Pokemon again, and I'm in it to collect everything. Like they just did it. They 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 hooked me a hundred percent. Finally, I mean this. I know we said this with Arceus, but like this 3D Pokemon in this way has to just be what it is moving forward, right? Like this is it. It has to. All right. Uh, just I have a couple of quick things. I do. I, I do want to say I'm I'm a little salty. About what? I've been playing for 36 hours. I haven't yep. come across a single shiny to my knowledge. That. Uh, those don't seem like good odds for you looking for a specific shiny Pokemon. We got it midnight release and two hours in Emily was playing, found a shiny Psyduck and a shiny fucking drowsy. Wow. The first two hours. And has those she seen... two were found within a span of like 10 minutes. Has she seen more since then? Uh, No. Okay, so re- she got incredibly lucky is what you're saying. Incredibly lucky. <laughs> like, it's insane. And I should I should bring up, too, the terrestrialization, the, the new Oh, gimmick. yeah, tell me about this. It's really not bad at all. It's basically okay. Dynamaxing. It, you have this typing and this ter- terrestrial orb, which you throw to terrestrialize them and giving them this really dope, elemental crown whatever type they are my favorite has got to be the electric one because it's just a big like jewelry light bulb on their head and it just looks great they like, all get it big, every everyone who is a, an electric type terrestrial is gets this electric they just get a um, light bulb this crystal light bulb on their head and it looks wonderful the dragon type's cool <laughs> it, there's so many different ones like the, the cool thing is you'll see a glowing Pokemon out of nowhere and you'll go up to it. And for example, I came across a level 75 Terra Lucario with an ice typing Terrastal. So when it terrestrializes, it takes on the ice type and also can use ice moves and attack like that while still being a dark type. Okay. Yeah, that sounds... That just sounds like they're slapping on stuff they've already done with a different name. It looks pretty too. Like it okay. looks nice and shiny. You don't use it too often. I'm having. I'm not having too too much issues of like difficulty and stuff. I'm just kind of flying through it, over leveling from doing everything. Yeah, but it's a fun f- like because like the, the the gym leader will use it for their last Pokemon, and I'll still one shot it, and they make it like this big show, and I'm like that was pointless. But <laughs> I, didn't, I I didn't even terrestrialize, and I just one shot at it. Embarrassed by a ten year old. Especially by this one, his name's Larry. He's just an average white guy businessman. He's just like, well, it's better than confronting my boss. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, Larry. Straight up depressed white guy, if I've ever seen one. All right. A couple of quick things for you, Dave, and then we'll move on to the news. News. I played Among Us for the first time. Were you the imposter? Once. In over two hours of playing, I was the imposter once. I won. I tell me about it. I earned everyone's trust by like, oh, we're hanging out by ourselves, and I don't kill them, and that gain that lets me gain their trust. Nice. And at the end, I went. I was with a crew of three. There were there were three other people left other than me, and I was the only imposter. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was a group with with two two of them, and we kind of split off. And I went with one of them to the corner of the mat, and I was like, "Yeah, I got you now." So I killed them. Mm-hmm. Then I met back up with the the last two, and there's a cooldown for your kill. And I was trying to play it off like, like, "Hey, you know." Must be that other guy, even though we couldn't talk to each other. But based on my Among Us body language in game. Okay. Uh, And then they were just kind of hanging out with me. So I was like, okay. And my my cooldown went down. and I just murdered one of them right in front of the other and I won. Oh, that's nice. That's all it takes. uh, Yeah. So if like if it's you and one other person left, 
the game's like, all right, well, it's over because they can't really stop you now. Yeah, it's just that you, it's just you and them. Yep. So that felt good. I really liked being the imposter, but it only happened one time. Okay. Uh, but I mean, there's not much to really talk about. Everyone knows Among Us. It was just my first time playing. And how long did games take? Not very long. We played oh. a decent amount of games in the span of like a little bit over two hours. Okay. Uh, and we had a decent, so it was nine of us total. So it was a pretty decent sized crew. And it was, it was fun. I liked Among Us. I, I would definitely play more of it. Got to get you on Marvel Snap, show you where the real games are. Uh, speaking of real games, remember last week when I said, hey, I'm not going to talk about Harvestella again until I'm done with the review. Mm -hmm. I need to talk about Harvestella because now that I'm like into it, right? Like there's no more tutorialization. It's just I'm straight up into it. The systems are happening. Don't say this game. Just just give me a quick update before the review is done. Okay. Just a quick update before the review is done. Yeah. That's all I'm asking. Uh, Everything, all the systems and the timing of them and the way that they are laid out is really smart and impressive to me because like i'll just give you a rundown of a basic day in harvestella you wake up at either around like 6 6 30 a.m the shops don't open until 8 a.m so it gives you just the perfect amount of time to do your farming take care of your crops it's not inconvenient to sell your stuff because you just put it in a box in your farm and then the next day someone comes and picks it up and gives you money and then you go to town hit up all the shops and by this point it's usually maybe around 11 a.m noon depending on people i was talking to and other things i was doing i then jump into a bunch of side quests which the side quest too it's not just like oh hey go get me three of these and then that's the end of the quest some of them are you know it's an rpg some of them are just kind of fetch quests for you to go get some items but Side quests with characters that I started like very beginning of the game just kind of continue on throughout the entire game. Mm -hmm. At least like where I I must be over, I must be around 25 hours in and it's still just, it continues. So they're not one-offs. It just kind of keeps building with these characters throughout the game or they'll like the end of a side quest will introduce a new character as part of it. And then, like, a couple of days later, you'll have a side quest with that character. So mm. it just kind of keeps building. And I did finish one of the the main parts, one of the Seas Light areas. And the main character from there in the main story now gets their whole side quest thing because each character has... They're not loyalty quests. They're just kind of character quests, but they all have a closeness meter. And every time you complete one of their quest specific to that character you go up in a in one tick in the closeness meter uh they're all they all go up to 10 from what i've seen Ooh, i don't okay. know if there is any sort of romance options or anything like that at this point i don't know if it goes there but you do these side quests you do what you can for the day because you only pretty much get so much you can do and a lot of it's like oh come back tomorrow night for this thing and then it's maybe around like 6 p.m. at this point. And that gives you just enough time to advance a bit in the main story or advance in the dungeon that you're currently going through. And then you go back home and you start it again. Rinse and repeat. It is just like the perfect amount of progression every single day in every aspect. It's really smart. And I am really liking this game. Much more, once you get over that beginning hump of just lots of tutorial and figuring stuff out and the way the game is meant to be played. Once you get there, it, it really works. Do you think this has a better cycle than something like animal crossing? Uh, yes. And I think that's, there's a couple of things. I mean, this is not real time. It takes like 10 seconds and 10 minutes will go by. Mm -hmm. Um, but animal crossing is probably better year round unless you're really into the farming part of this game okay. just because it's you know there's something new to do every day but at some point with animal crossing you're like all right i put in my hour today now all i can do is catch fish and bugs for the rest of the day yeah this is constantly like i'll i'll play for one more day 
uh, one more day. I'll do. I'll, I'll take care of my farming in the morning. And it, it mm-hmm. is all just very smart of like any uh, save point you find, which are multiple like throughout dungeons or just across the different towns. Uh, you could just warp back to home instantaneously without wasting any time from any of them. Hmm. So like it's it's just a lot of stuff like that that's really smart. Also, the towns themselves are there's like the main one, which is a typical like small starting village in a game like this. Hmm. The next one you go to is cherry blossoms everywhere, super pink, very pretty. And the other one's like a tropical beach little town. It's all. I, I I talked more than I wanted to about it here, but this has been I'm into this more than I thought I was going to be. And it's been kind of like a very pleasant surprise to close out the year. Well, that's good, especially since it's taking up so many big hitters. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, it's part of doing reviews, right? <laughs> like this yeah. is I kind of have to focus on it, but I'm not complaining about that. The only thing I'm complaining about is the fact that I only have so much time. So it's all going Mm. to this while there are a million other games I want to play, but that's not at any fault of the game. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I think that'll do it. It's news time. There wasn't a lot of news this week. No, not a lot. Let's just jump into it. Uh, Remember Mick Gordon, that whole situation last week? Yeah. And Bethesda uh, said something. Yeah, which was a bad move. It was, uh, Lol, no fake news. And that's like not really much of an exaggeration. <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey, we still stand with these guys no matter what you hear. Like, OK. Yeah, the their whole statement was like, Mick is lying. We stand by Marty. Mm. Uh, truth has been I don't remember the words they used, but it was basically saying fake news. Uh, the one thing they did say is that Marty and some members uh, at id are getting violent threats towards them. That's never cool. That's never yeah, the no. way to to do this stuff. But it was the statement sucked. It was just kind of like, nope. We'll probably so, be learning a lot more about it soon enough. Yeah, I'm sure we will. I wonder if this is going to actually proceed. I know Mick Gordon in his statement talked about it, like potentially going to court, but they're being some sort of potential settlement, but he didn't take it. I don't remember, but I wonder if this is going to go that route. Who knows? It's definitely big, but what's bigger than big. I didn't know how to transition that. I don't know. What's, (laughs) what's huge. A mountain call horizon call of the mountain. Wow. There you go. Big news. Got a release date. It's officially news. Got a release date. (laughs) It is big news. It is. It uh, it does. It has <laughs> been. It has been given. Do have a release date. Good job. It is officially a PSVR 2 launch title coming out on February 22nd. And if you do not own a PS5, get ready to <laughs> dig down into a thousand dollars to be even to play this game. I can't imagine. This game on its own is worth over a thousand dollars. Literally, like when it's always the release of these sort of titles, the amount of money that you have to put in just to be able to play like a 40, 50, 60 dollar game VR or not. Yeah, but especially VR, just like all this just for that. And then you have just the Oculus, which is getting a price increase. But we got in at a decent time. We did. It was what, 250 or was it 200? Uh, I, I think 250. So $250 and we get most of the VR games. Obviously there's exclusives, but wireless. It might not be the best visually, but it's still pretty fucking damn good. I don't know if I, I don't care how good the visuals are. I don't think I could go back to wires. It's, it's going to be hard. The wires from now we're going to go. That was the PS one of VR, (laughs) but still fun to play. It is a lot of fun to play. I don't know when I'm going to actually play it again because uh, there's it's too hard. much. There's too, it, it doesn't stop. Did you look at December? It's bad. Dude, it December stop. 2nd, Callisto Protocol. I need Aren't there it. like three things coming out on December 2nd? 
Uh, yeah, there is too, but nothing beats Callisto for me. Yeah, Callisto Protocol, Need for Speed, Unbound, and Marvel's yeah. Midnight Suns is all December 2nd. Right. Man, Midnight Suns would have been a good March game. <laughs> yeah, it would have been. Mm-hmm. All right, this is uh, an interesting story. So, Yuji Naja, who is the co-creator of Sonic the Hedgehog, got arrested for mm-hmm. insider trading. So, even though they are the co-creator of Sonic, they were working at Square Enix at the time, uh, and they bought 10,000 shares in Aiming, which is the developer of Dragon Quest Tact, a mobile game. Before the announcement of this partnership was made, uh, Naja was working at Square Enix and bought these 10,000 shares that are worth about $20,000. That, you would like to think, he they probably had some insider knowledge there. Of mm-hmm. this partnership happening, we're like, yeah, now's the time. Yeah, that's pretty illegal. It is. So, I don't know. Just seeing the 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 headline of Sonic the Hedgehog co creator arrested is like, whoa. Yeah, but it'll probably be fine at the same time. Probably. That's usually how this goes. Yeah. And make more Sonic. <laughs> Never enough Sonic. What else is coming out that they keep making is the Dark Pictures Anthology Directive 8020. I've yet to see the trailer, but I, it sounds like a new sci-fi theme. Uh, yeah. It is going to be set in future on a space station. Uh, it is going to be the premiere of season two. And I wonder if they are just like doing a whole shift or if this is just another horror just in a different setting. Yeah, it it's I don't know. We'll have to see. I tried to watch a trailer a couple different times just based on all the news reports and I would go to one and it would be like this video has been taken down. And then I go to another which said it was the story trailer but then it was just a trailer for the devil in me. Yeah. So like I don't know if they're really taking down all the videos of this. Uh even though it's at the end of the devil in me, so like at this point it's just kind of out there cuz that game is out, but Yeah. So why still keep what whatever man i don't know but that sounds cool to me a sci-fi one of these absolutely that'll bring me back in uh bayonetta 4 seemingly (sighs) is a thing after it took so long for bayonetta 3 to happen uh platinum game senior vp hideki kamiya uh tweeted about just about the ending of bayonetta 3 which i don't know what happens but apparently it's controversial Hmm. um a couple times he was referencing in the tweet, like when Bayonetta four comes out, it'll make sense. It'll be a shift you're not expecting. But when Bayonetta four, like basically be like, yeah, that I, I can't picture more confirmation than that. It's, it reminds me of when like they would sometimes say Borderlands three back in the day before it was announced. So it's like, is are they saying it like what are they? Is it really like it's probably going to come out at some point? But like, are they really saying that they're doing something with it? Yeah, uh, I I think this is just kind of a bigger deal because of how long Bayonetta 3 actually took. So it took yeah. a good while, but yeah, I don't know. I haven't played 3, but I'm down for 4 or 2. Why not? Why not? I'll run through them and not pay attention. Yeah, that's that's I mean, they're, what, they're mindless fun. It's what they are. They have a cool style. That's what they are to me. Something that has been taking <laughs> absolutely forever to come out has just gotten delayed again (laughs) dead island 2 it's been a good uh eight years three developers is currently getting pushed back from february 3rd to april 28th i'm still gonna wait and play it (laughs) but it's just i'm still waiting yeah that's it's just it's funny dead island 2 getting delayed again it really is and it's I, I i almost wanted to keep going and they they even say the irony is not lost on us in the yeah this which game. yeah it's at least they like recognize <laughs> they recognize that but boy <laughs> that was forever ago that that game was supposed to happen yeah but we'll be here we'll we'll be waiting dave are there any notable game releases this week what day are we going up to? Because I'm looking right now. 22nd go, to the 28th. Go, go, 22nd to the 28th. There really isn't a lot. 
We got Just Dance 2023, whatever. Uh, Soccer Story. So is that is that is that related to golf story and sports story? That would make me think so, but I'm not 100 percent sure. I am kind of I excited feel for like Evil we would West. Know about that? Evil West coming out November 22nd on PC, PS5, PS4, Xbox Series Ooh. X and S, and Xbox One. There's that's a notable game release. I've been wanting to play that one for a little bit. Yeah, it looks cool. Um, I didn't have and... that. I got to add that to my list of games that I want. I didn't have it in there. I'm hoping it comes on Game Pass. Part of me thinks it will. It well, feels like a Game like Pass game. For me. All right. Evil West. That's it. That was the now, most brushed over notable game releases we've ever done. I mean, there really isn't a lot right now. <sighs> you want right. to lose against the game again? It's I'm really good at losing in this. This is a week, what, six in a row? Five? I lost track because once I was like officially eliminated from winning this season or at least tying, I haven't I, I don't I don't like to think about it, mm-hmm. but it's got to be like six or seven in a row now. Let's kick it off. <laughs> <laughs> November 15th, number 185, Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story took me four tries. That also took me four. I thought that one was tough until they showed the little toad thing. I guessed a random Mario and Luigi game because it just looked like something on a DS or whatever. I was, yeah, I was guessing DS games, but I did not think of that until I saw Toad. Mm hmm. Uh, 1116, number 186 was Stray. I got it in one try. Also one try. I love that game too much. There was there was nothing about it that was like, that's definitely Stray. But I think it's just one of those weird things that your brain just like in the pulls back onto of your these mind, images. Like this yeah. One. Yep. You, and just, since, you know this. Since we both played it recently, I think it was just one of those things. It's so good. After that, on the 17th, number 187 was Angry Birds. Took me three tries, and I was getting mad. Also, <laughs> like, once I tries. found out it was Angry Birds, like, really? <laughs> uh, 11, 18, number 188 was Slay the Spire. That took me three tries. Took me two tries. It was honestly a bit of a shot, and like, again, one of those brain things, like, should I guess this? Because it's one of those real zoomed-in background pictures yeah. that you don't really pay attention to too much. But uh, something about it was just like this. Even the first picture, I'm like, slay the spire across the mind. I'm like, no, this has got to be something different. <laughs> Some like like story game cinematic part or whatever. Yeah, this one really didn't feel obvious until the third one, which I don't know if you saw the picture because you got it in two. But it was like mm-hmm. the map with the different icons on it. Yeah. And that's what I was like, OK, I know what type of game this is. And that was a big one. So that game is so good. On the 19th, number 189, Warhammer Vermintide 2 took me four tries. That took me five tries. It was a bit of a shot in the dark for me towards that point. I I remember the hit being like left for dead ish. And for whatever reason, these games just didn't come to my mind. until I saw the next picture of the giant creatures. I was like, oh, I know what this Mm -hmm. is now. Yeah. Uh. On the 20th, number 190 was Grim Fandango. I squelched. I don't know if I've ever seen that game in my life. I have. I've seen it a few times because Gearbox worked on it, so it always pops Mm. up in my head. And it's been getting a few remasters over the past few years. So it's been more popped up in popularity. And I'm looking at the art style, and I'm like, this looks so familiar. What is this? And I didn't get it to the third one. I was like, what? Uh," And I went back to the first. I was like, "Uh, I'm going to go Grim Fandango, and it was the right one. Finally, on the 21st, number 191, was Titanfall 2. That took me too many tries. It was five. That took me three tries. I'm surprised that took you so many tries. It just wasn't clicking at first. I I fucking wrote down Apex. I wrote down something (laughs) else. I just couldn't get it. I even, I'm pretty sure I wrote down Stray again. (laughs) You You know, stray when the giant mechs fall from the sky. You know, it was the thing that said pew. I'm like, what is this? I think I think I did Star Wars as well. I was like, I don't. I don't remember what I guessed for that first one because I didn't know with that. But then the second one had giant mechs falling from the sky. So I said Titanfall. 
And then it was like, no. And then the third picture was one of the creatures from the campaign. So I was like, Titanfall 2. Yeah, I guess Apex when I saw the creatures. Okay, I the creatures in Apex are pretty much the same thing, so. Yeah. Same. But Apex doesn't have Max. I need Titanfall 3. That is the most important. I would not anticipate that anytime soon. I need it, though. You're going to be left needing. I'm going to be left for dead. No, that's Vermintide 2. We might have a um, uh, hint to the next Legends game because there's a background picture with the professor dude on one of the boards in the classroom. And there was another image that uh, people seem to think is a different region from Sinnoh and also be in ancient times. So I would love to play the next one. I Even I'll hope... play the next Let's Go, like Let's Go Johto or whatever. I hope they take everything good about Arceus and everything good about Scarlet and Violet. And that's what the next Legends game is. Yeah, and I think they will because it's going to be so good. It's just Pokemon. Give us if they also give us like an awesome 3D adventure Pokemon game. There's a Pokemon Ranger somehow. I would fall in absolute love. Is it just going to be every year from now on your game of the year is Pokemon? It depends on if they keep innovating it like so, because I'm having a buttload of fun right now. It is insane. And I like it is just it really is the perfect evolution of Pokemon, that full traditional style going against the gyms, the Elite Four, everything else. But they're just walking around in front of you and you're just doing your thing and you can catch them. and It's just something else. I was picturing you talking about the gym leaders walking around in front of you. I mean, and was initially a little confused not, about nope. you catching the gym leaders. I keep saying I'm kidnapping them. I'm like, yep, you're mine now. I mean, I mean, when you really yeah. look at what's happening. I, every year, PETA fights Pokemon, and it's the funniest thing ever. Do they do they really? Every year they try to fight Pokemon. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Listen. Animal abuse and the environment and ecosystems is all very real. The Pokemon's not real. And you're not taking down the biggest franchise to ever exist. No, it is. Wasn't that like a thing last year that was like it's, officially it's bigger, the biggest IP? It's bigger than Disney. That's insane. It is the biggest in the entire world. They make the most money in the world. Which so is why think... the optimization and the way the games look. Because people are comparing, like, if you can have the fucking Witcher and Xenoblade Chronicles 3 run on the Switch and Pokemon looks like shit, I mean, <laughs> you can do so much better. Yeah, uh, you can. You like, you have off. Breath of the Wild and then you have the, what this game is doing. Like, I'm still addicted and I'm still playing the shit out of it, but this is no excuse for the way these things run and the way they look. Not at all. I still want to play it. You really should, because it's so amazing. <laughs>